There are as many ways to demonstrate our love for God and his people as there are hearts. Grace Cafe is one way that the collective heart in Coleman's Grace Church is trying to act on what we have been led to. The Holy Spirit led us there through an article about feeding ministries around the diocese published in the September-October 2008 edition of The Apostle. Now, I'm sure that those at The Apostle, now the Alabama Episcopalian, Mentones, St. Joseph's on the Mountain, Trinity and Clanton, or Lou Thibodeau, who wrote about what they and others were doing, had no way of knowing how the ripples they created would nudge our parish many miles away in Coleman. Yet as I read the article and looked at the pictures, it was absolutely clear that God was planting a seed that would blossom into Grace Cafe. Now the vision for Grace Cafe was different from most other feeding ministries. Different people have different needs, and the cafe was seen as a way to meet three constellations of needs that everyone tries to fill in varying degrees. In broad brushstrokes, some people are physically hungry and just need and want a meal. Some may be longing for fellowship, companionship, and a feeling of connectedness, while others may be looking for a way to find, renew, or nurture their relationship with God. Some may be seeking a blend of all three. Therefore, the cafe was seen as a way to provide each guest whatever size portion they are looking for to meet their needs. With those goals, the cafe was pitched to the vestry as a place that would embrace anyone who wanted to be nourished with delicious food, warm fellowship, and or God's amazing love. There would be no reservations, no way to control how many showed up, just invite, cook, serve, love, and see what happens. Now the first hurdle that had to be overcome was moving folks beyond the ubiquitous mental picture of a soup kitchen. Instead, the cafe would serve the best barbecue chicken, baked beans, and slaw we could prepare, accompanied by bread, wonderful homemade desserts, iced tea and coffee, served in a fun, warmly welcoming, and spiritual place for whoever was brave enough to walk through our doors. With no history of doing anything like that, having only a galley kitchen and no money to fund it, you can imagine what our priest and vestry members' initial reactions were. One envisioned giving away a free lunch, drawing a thousand people, invading the building with dozens fighting over who would be the first to play the organ. Others were afraid would be embarrassed when only seven showed up. There were questions like, well, what are you going to do if somebody pulls up in a new Cadillac expecting a free lunch? And comments like, you'll never get enough people in the parish to volunteer. All legitimate concerns when being asked to step into the unknown, particularly in the context of, even if it would work, we just can't afford it right now. But over the next few months, some amazing things started happening. John, who had recently lost his wife, walked into our priest office with a check for $5,000. It was his tithe from Mary Jane's life insurance proceeds, and he wanted to know if there was a particular need it could be used for. Bob suggested the new feeding ministry that was being talked about, and John thought that was the perfect idea since Mary Jane loved to serve and feed others. After more vestry discussions and committee meetings, folks remained justifiably skittish. Yet Grace Church finally agreed to hold hands and step off the cliff beginning in May 2009 for a six-month trial. Bob put signs up in the parish hall the following Sunday to start recruiting the many willing hearts needed to fill all the different teams. A pit crew was needed to cut up, marinade, and grill chicken. Flower children were needed to make and deliver desserts on the morning of. Town criers to put up flyers, be on our local TV stations morning programs, and write articles for the newspaper and PSAs for the radio stations. 
Roadies were needed to set up the room and set the table. Minstrels to play guitars and lead guests in 30 minutes of Alleluia 2 songs. Faces of grace were needed to act as waiters. Sous chefs to prepare the sides and plate the lunches. Hands of grace to clean up the kitchen and parish hall afterwards. And postal workers to print, collect, and mail postcards for guests to write notes of appreciation and support to Alabama servicemen and women stationed overseas. It's a way for them to pay it forward, to do something nice for somebody else. Now that first Sunday, the goal was to recruit or start recruiting the 24 willing hearts needed before the first cafe five weeks away. Surprisingly, at the end of the day, 32 parishioners had signed up and every team's needs were filled. By the second cafe, there were 46 parishioners helping and we now have 60 who are actively participating in some capacity. To put those numbers into context, our average Sunday attendance is only 135. For the first cafe, a number was simply pulled out of the air and we prepared for 100. 60 guests came to eat in and we sent 14 go plates to husbands, wives, sick parishioners, and others. Day of volunteers were fed and the few leftovers remaining were given to a nearby women's shelter. Today, the cafe is preparing for 150 and averaging about 120 eat-in guests served with 131 as Grace Cafe's current world record. The really good news, though, is that the cafe is nourishing people from every facet of our community. As you have been seeing, the cafe has served guests from six months to 93 years old. They have been people who are highly paid professionals, laborers, office workers, policemen, firemen, unemployed, unemployable, retired, blacks, whites, Hispanics, those from our church, from other churches, the unchurched. They've been singles, families, friends, and they have come from the city and the county. As I record this, we have had eight cafes so far, and each has greeted enough guests so they can comfortably blend in. And we have not had more than we can accommodate. It's amazing how God will take care of those kinds of things when we try to follow his lead. When we dropped our pebble in the pond, we had no idea who our ripples might touch or if they would touch anyone. And like the article in the Apostle that provided the seed for us, we aren't able to see into the future and know what impact the cafe may have. What we do know is that it has been a lot of work, great fun, and has nourished our parish and the 900 or so guests we have served to date with food, fellowship, and faith. We also know that one of our first guests volunteered to make beautiful silk arrangements each month for the cafe's tables and men's and women's bathrooms. Another has become a flower child and brings a cake with her to share. Another helps the Faces of Grace serve drinks and bus tables. The Mental Health Center is teaching some of their mentally challenged clients the rewards of helping others, and eight of them came in December to eat, then stayed to help the Hands of Grace clean up afterwards. A Sunday school class at a Methodist church across town has started their own feeding ministry, which they modeled after Grace Cafe, and they are feeding about 125 people every Thursday night. As one of our longtime parishioners commented, who is somewhat skeptical and resistant to change, this is one of the best things Grace has done in a long, long time. Not just for the community, but for us. Being in that parish hall on the fourth Tuesday of each month, feeling the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit, seeing Christ peering through each guest's eyes and hearing the joy in the volunteers' voices is a powerful blessing. One, you're invited to join anytime. Thank you, God.